as the Holy Spirit will guide on today, I want to share to be saved is to be whole. To be saved is to be whole. Let us pray. God, not my will, but your will be done. Not my sermon, but your sermon preached to and through me. Holy Spirit, have your way. Make me nothing, oh God, that you can become everything. So that your word will reach the hearts of all your people. Hide me, O oh God, behind your cross that you might go forth. So that the words of my mouth, but the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight God you are our strength and our holy redeemer in Christ's name we pray amen to be saved is to be whole we don't talk about salvation too much anymore in the church I'd probably just make an assumption that everyone is saved but let's talk about it today if you were uh to read Romans chapter 10, beginning at verse number one, you will read in the first verse that our author, Paul, opens up and he's talking to Israel. He's talking to the Jewish community. This is what Paul is, says. He says, I pray that Israel will be saved. I pray that the Jews will be saved. I pray that God's select will be saved. I pray that those who came this morning at 1030 are saved or will be saved. I pray that those who are on church rolls and serve in church ministries will be saved. Paul's opening line demonstrates the distance and the behavior of the saved versus the unsaved. To remember when Paul came on the scene of scripture, he was in opposition to the Christian that he's he now is. And in opposition to the Christian that he now is, that the only way Paul could see ending the movement and the mission of Christianity was to bring hurt and harm to every confessed believer. Now Paul, who stood with the Jews, now stands opposite of the Jews. But the unsaved one who was trying to hurt the saved ones is now saved. And instead of invoking punishment on his opposition, he prays. That, that, that unsaved folk are always about revenge on their enemy. But saved folk is about revelation for their enemy. That, that unsaved folk hold grudges. Saved folk offer mercy. So here is our, our author, Paul, who used to use a, a hurt, harm, and bullying to stop a movement. Now that he saves, he says, I pray. Huh. I know I'm older than some of y'all in here. Y'all don't get that, but I, I pray. Um, but at the same time, he does not uh, 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 um, make the Jews feel less because th their, 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 their zeal for God and their love for God it is admirable how they hold on to the laws of God. That, that, that you have to admire the Jews' effort and how they go about keeping the law of God. One author talked about and, and gave admiration to how they treat the Sabbath day. 
The Sabbath day was so much a, so much a part of their rest that they even determined how many footsteps one should make in the course of a day. That they, they were so tied into the Sabbath day that they had, they, had made, uh, they had made it their business that you can make sick people comfortable, but don't make them better. This is why they always ask to Jesus when he heals somebody on the Sabbath, why would he do that? They were so in line and trying so hard to be in line with the Sabbath, they wouldn't even pork poke or mend the fire. And Paul says, I admire you for that, but all the Sabbaths will do is give you rest, but it won't give you restoration. I pray you get saved. One, one, one went so far as to talk about how they, 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 they don't eat, they don't eat uh, um, chitlins and ham and steak and pork, any kind of pork or beef. They have this diet that God has given them and they, they follow the diet and, and, and some of us have, have uh, and, and Paul says, I admire your eating habits and I, and I, and I even will go so far as say, I admire how you eat and how you exercise. But Paul says, let's be clear, it might make you healthier, but it won't make you holier. Tony Evans says this, you can eat all the diet food you want and run as many miles as you like to. It may improve the quality of your life, but it ain't going to change the quantity for death is upon it. <laughs> he, he says, he says, he says, he says, because they are so locked into law that, that to be saved is not legal. But to be saved is to be in relationship with God. So much so that when Jesus comes on the earth, he doesn't change the law. He fulfills the law and he explains the law in tune and in texture of relationship. That when he preaches the sermon on the mount, listen to what he says. He says that you have heard, he says you have heard it say, said that thou shall not kill. Watch what he does. He says you have heard it said that thou shall not kill. That's the end of the relationship. But he says, but I say say to you don't even get angry and you won't even get that far or that messed up in your relationship he says you have heard it said if you want a divorce write down and put it in writing but I say to you don't even lust because when you write the divorce that's the end of the marriage but if you stop lusting you'll never get to divorce court because he's always about relationship he says you have heard it said an eye for an eye he said that's a war and a battle but I say to you if they hit one cheek give them the other because when you turn the other that diffused the battle and now you're at peace <laughs> he, 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 he says he says if you really want to be whole be saved because although your intent is good and it's nice that you want to follow the law, the truth of the matter is Jesus came because could not nobody keep the law because most people were dying from the law. He says, so let's move away from the law and get saved. Let's talk about, let's, let's get away from legalism. He says, if, you, if you're going to be saved, see, we don't talk about salvation too much. I can tell where y'all looking at me. If you're going to be saved, acknowledge Jesus as Lord. Or, or they say, acknowledge, acknowledge, confess with your mouth Jesus, Jesus, the, the, the mouth, with your mouth the Lord Jesus. But really it's confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. I hope y'all don't get my y'all y'all don't get mad to hear my stories. But I like to tell my stories because they, they're transparent, but they also let you know that I'm not superhuman and I have issues too. So he said, he says, if you're going to be saved, save people, acknowledge Jesus is Lord. Now watch this why this is important. Now I learned this in my marriage. When when I when I first came into ministry, 
or before I came into ministry, you take some classes called seminary. Seminary, my professor of preaching taught me this. He said, as a pastor, it is important that you remember the name of your parishioners or remember name, names of people, especially when those people, those people know you by name. He says because, he says because they, they, they value your position and when you speak back, they want to know that you value them. Y'all with me? Well, when me and my wife first got married, that was in the back of my mind. And we would go to conferences and my colleagues would be standing there and they'd come to me, hey, Tim. I didn't know the name. As a matter of fact, some of y'all know I'm real bad. And Miss Cassandra asked me every month. What's my name so I can tell her what her name is? <laughs> Y'all make me so mad. So, so my wife is standing there holding my hand, and I'm talking to the person that says, hey, Tim, but I don't know their name. Now, I did that once, and the, the first one, why don't you tell them who, who I am? So I explained to her, but that, I, as, as, as right as I thought I sound, I was wrong as can be. So, 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 so then she says to me, she says, I says to her, I said, well, I don't want them to know that I don't know their name. Her argument was, but I want to make sure you know my name. <laughs> so I had to learn how to make the adjustment because now my wife had to be more than my reputation. I just said something there. The woman that I married had to have more value than the people who just wanted me to pretend I knew them. So, so my wife didn't leave me there. She taught me how to do it. She said, when next time you get in that situation, it's all right for you to say, you know what? I'm sorry. Could you give me your name again? I know some men getting mad at me right now. And, 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 I, and so I did that. And this is what I said. I said, it happened. I said, excuse me. I just can't remember your name right now. Could you give me your name? And this is what I said. And this is my wife, Stephanie. That don't sound like much to y'all. Let me, let me trans, trans interpret it. This is whom I belong to. This is who I sleep with. This is who butter my bread and I sometimes butter hers. Y'all missing it. In other words, when I acknowledge to whom I belong, it really doesn't matter what you're thinking now because now you know I'm a married man because when I say that's my wife, you translate then that, then you're her husband. Y'all ain't got it yet. If he knows her name, then she knows. Y'all still ain't got it. So the Lord says, if you're going to be saved, I need you to acknowledge that I am your Lord, that you introduce me. This is Jesus. He is my Lord. Come on in here because I know this that he said, we, we have this translation it said, it said, with your mouth, G, the, 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 the Lord Jesus. Some people say just acknowledge him as Jesus the Lord. But it's important that you confess and acknowledge Jesus is Lord. Because what that says, that in this case, when I acknowledge Jesus is Lord, he's just not my God. He's your God. When I say is, that means even if you don't have him, he still is. Even if you don't believe it, he still is. Even when you're not faithful, he he still is. Even when you're not merciful, he still is. Even when you're not loving him, he still is. Jesus is Lord is to acknowledge not only is he God for me, but it's enough God to go around to you. He said, if you're going to be saved, introduce God. Confess him. Not in a closet. Speak so people can hear you. As they say, as a, as a mother said to her child, speak up. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Shout it out. Don't be talking about, I'm a Christian. No, I'm a Christian. I love me some Jesus. Don't you love God? Wash down believers. Let me stop. I got two more points. Y'all don't want to lose y'all. He says, then he says, 
Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. But he said, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. He says, after you acknowledge him, if you're going to be saved, you have to accept him. <sighs> Notice what he says. He doesn't say to think on him in your mind. He says, believe in your heart. Because legalism is a mental thing. You know it, but you do it, and you do it. But to believe on him is an emotional thing. And that's like when I can't think on him, I can feel him. <laughs> that's why, you know, you, you know, sometimes when I'm preaching, I can feel this thing. Y'all may not see it, but it's like I can feel God's presence. People be sitting there talking about, well, I don't see him. That's because you can't see him. I can feel him. Y'all see with me now. Because, because the problem is, is that uh, we, we, when we do faith mentally, um, we are nothing but God's gold diggers. Let me have you. Let me have you. Because when I'm emotional, let me tell you what, your emotions is, it, it, when, you, when, you, when you feel them in the heart, that's the emotional, physical, intellectual, moral that pushes you in action. But when you see God legal and mental, it means you're a gold digger. Let me, let me tell you what a gold digger does. A gold digger makes decisions mentally based on measuring the benefit, the investment, the advantage, and how it helps them. Once it doesn't have a benefit or an investment or gives them the advantage, they leave and don't care because they were never emotionally tied. Are y'all with me? Uh, that's why the songwriter wrote the song, Break Up to Make Up. This is what the songwriter is really saying. Mentally, I can't stand you, but I keep coming back because I'm feeling you. I wish I had a witness here. I tried to leave that so many times but something just keep drawing me back then got your heart and so I know some, some theologians say what well, Jesus said the scripture says let this mind be in you that's in Christ well you have to understand that the mentality of Christ was heartfelt how did I know? Because when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he spoke his mind when he said, God, if it be your will, take this bitter cup away from me. But then his heart took over and he said, not my will, but thine will be done because I'm feeling this thing. Yeah. Ha. And so he says, he says, so if you believe it to accept God means that you have to believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Now, now I got another question I had to ask myself. Why did Paul say, believe that God raised Jesus from the dead? I said, why in the world didn't Paul say, believe that Jesus was born in a manger? Why didn't Paul write that Jesus walked on earth? Why didn't Paul write that Jesus carried a cross of God Gotha's heel? Why didn't Paul write that Jesus died in a grave? He says, believe in your heart, except that he rose from the dead he been the reason why he jumps right to the pudding he says because once you can accept that he got up from the dead then you can believe he can get you up out of any mess that you in if you can believe in your heart that Jesus is alive and well you can believe that he's living in you if you believe that he got up from the grave then you can believe that he was enough ransom for all our sins if you can believe he got up from the grave you can believe he had enough blood 
blood to wash us all. If you can believe he got up on the grave, you can believe he walks down every aisle, hears every prayer, answers every concern, bless every one of his children. If you can believe that and accept that, then you can believe all things are possible. One more and I'm gone. He says, you, to be saved, David, he says, you're going to be saved, acknowledge him, don't be, don't be whispering, accept him, feel him. And then he says, uh, he gets down and, and I put a pen and shall be saved or will be saved. We're going to talk about that at the end. But he says, and basically he says, and you won't be put to shame. It's first saying, adhere to him, don't be ashamed. You know what shameful people do when they're ashamed of God? When you leave church, people don't know you've been to church. <laughs> See what I mean? I'm saying stuff to y'all, and y'all don't look like y'all receiving it. So when you walk out the door, if you raise in hell, then don't nobody know you in Jesus because you're ashamed. I ain't trying to hurt nobody. If your language changed when you leave here from being praised to... I'm trying to help them, Brother Freeman, because they look like they, 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 got, they got mad with me. If your communion juice get a little stronger... Okay, now I got your attention. You know, let me tell you, sometimes you got to help them from all along the way because they, they get deep on you. You don't want them going to, he, he said, he said, but let me tell you, before, since we're in Black History Month, before you can adhere to God's, God in, in, in faith, you first got to adhere or not be ashamed of who you are in reality. that I, I'm starting to believe that the more successful we become as black folk, the farther away we move from our authenticity. We're the only race of people who don't want to talk about our history and forget where we came from. And let me tell you something that... Uh, Carter Woodson did not create black history for the world to see a few exceptional Negroes. Because intelligence and creativity and innovative beings are not color coded. Although a color has tried to code it. Woodson decided to do Black History Week so that the racial hatred and the unjust practices will not forget the contributions that black folk made that made America great and keep us traveling so we can make it greater and not go back to again. Yet black folk, me, us folk, it seems like the more successful we become, the farther away we move from our blackness. And you have to be proud of our authenticity. Let me tell you what makes us unique. It's the way we swag. Y'all, 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 y'all laugh right now, but y'all gonna, I'm telling you, it's, it's. It's, it's the way we speak. It's how we dress. It's how we seasoning food to make it soulful. That is the authenticity of being black. It's how we worship that makes us who we are. Come on in here. You don't believe me? Take President Obama. Cover his hands and his face. And watch him walk across the green lawn. You'll know he's a black man. You ain't got to see nothing. Just watch his swag. Can I get, can I get some help up in here? You can take, 
you can put on radio Maya Angelou, Eric Dyson, Martin Luther King, Oprah Winfrey, Michelle Obama, but the way they conjugate verbs and nouns and speak as if there's an African drum beating in their soul and a rhythmic piano backing them up, or you know who, who they are. Y'all ain't got it yet. Because you have, and now we come in the church and we sit here in cushioned pews and all cute. We forgot about the morning's bench. We can't raise a hand because our suit might tear. We can't say thank you because you, you ain't got, and then we come in church dr king say you don't sing negro spiritual that is our heritage don't want to rock in the choir that is our heritage and then we got preachers who will laugh at preachers like me because we hoop but negroes made the hoop and if you can't be proud of your blackness if you can't speak loud on that how are you going to acknowledge god hey when I say say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Act like you black and now act like you Christian. Walk in it, walk by faith, not by sight. Talk in it, I can do all things in Christ that strengthened me. Serve in it, go make some disciples. And the Lord says, and if you don't be ashamed, you won't be put to shame. Because if you ain't saved, you ain't whole. And to be saved is to acknowledge him publicly, to believe in him wholeheartedly, and to act like it in front of everybody. Now here's where me and Bible get upset. It says in one scripture, you will be saved. But King James says, you shall be saved. I don't know if y'all remember this. There is a difference between what shall be and what will be. <sighs> I'm going to cut this off because I'm going to be a minute with y'all. <laughs> I love y'all, but y'all just good to me. Let me tell you, I was in a meeting when I first got here to church. And, um, and I'm just going to kind of. Uh, kind of make it up as I go, but it's, it's really, it's really is true. So we have a book of discipline. Let me tell you, when I say, okay, I'm going to explain it to you. Made up mean it's not the exact conversation, so I'm making it, but it really is reflective of what really happened. Whoo, help me, Lord. So we were in a meeting, and in our book of discipline, they use a lot of shell. The book of discipline, for those of you who don't know, it is the discipline or the laws of the church in which we in which we organize the United Methodist Church it's called a book of discipline so in that book of discipline it says paraphrasing a little bit but it says something like this there shall be nine trustees now I'm the pastor and, and we're a growing church Reverend Oliver I don't want nine trustees Give me six. And they, they, and you know, I'm young, so they're going to argue every point with me. And they said to me, it says it shall be nine. I said, but I only want six. Because if you're a growing church, somebody may come in the middle of the year that's make a good trustee, and now I got a full house, I can't put them in. And I said, shall be is it doesn't mean it is in concrete. They said to me, I don't see no difference in shall be and will be. If you shall be, then you will be. Now, I was in one of the moments, Tony, where I was like, I know I'm right, but I just don't know how to articulate my rightness. So now some 20 years later, I figured it out. Shall be saved is to say there's a strong assertion of a future intent. 
let me put it this way. If you acknowledge Jesus, accept him, and adhere to him, it's really saying you should be saved. Different from will be. Will be saved is to say, watch it. If you accept him, acknowledge him, and adhere to him, no matter what you do after that, you're going to be saved whether you like it or not. So Paul made it a point to say shall be rather than will be because if he says will be, there's no free will for you. And he also know that Negroes will opt out. I'm sorry. White folk and Chinese have been known to opt out. Because once you get what you want or don't get what you want, you pack your little bag and will leave. And so he said, and the Lord says, well, if you're going to go, long as you shall be saved, I'm going to leave a crack in the door so that when you leave, you can go. Let, let, let me help you. I, people use the church and they, they give their life to the Lord. I done took their hand. Y'all done hugged them and applaud, applauded them, kissed them. And they was using you from the very beginning, using me. Because we have a policy here that in order for you to get the benefits of the pastor free of charge, then you have to stay a couple of years. I have had members join church calculated the date they came, two years to the period, and was cashing in on all the freebies they could get from the church, from the pastor. And as soon as they got the freebie, one week later, they gone. Because they opt out. And so what, so what Paul is really saying, he is saying this, that if you and I want to be saved, we can be saved if we acknowledge God, if we accept God, if we walk in God. He says, but do understand this. If you want to leave God, you are more than welcome to take the exit, but you can always come back to God. Y'all ain't got it yet. Because what Paul is saying is that if you're really saved and you want to be saved, you don't leave in the first place. And the reason why Paul leaves the door cracked that you can go out and come back in because Jesus did save. Y'all ain't got it. You shall be saved, but Jesus said, I did save. That even when you go out, if you come back in, the blood that I shed on Calvary is still good when you leave and it's good when you come back. And when you come back and you decide to stay with the Lord, you will be saved because God will never leave you, never forsake you and so don't you leave God because if you want to be whole you've got to be saved and the only one that can save you is Jesus you can go any Tom Dick Harry Sue Sally religion you want but salvation only comes one way you can get mad, leave, exit, pack your bags. But if you want to be saved, you're coming back to the exit place, the place you exit. Because there's only one name under the sun that can save a sinner like you and me. My pastor told, my professor told me one day that every day is a day of salvation. I said, why you mean every day is a day of salvation? He said, let me tell you this way. Every day when you wake up, you and I need to be saved again. God already knows it. I said, what you mean? I've already did it. He said, but we have a tendency that even though we get saved today, we'll sin tomorrow. And so that means we need to be saved again. That's why the Bible says, new 
mercy he has to supply every day not just for the day you in but for the mess we made on yesterday he says because we need to understand none of us are perfect none of us are where we should be but every day that I wake up if I call on the name of the Lord believe it in my heart confess him in public walk a little straighter with him I shall be at least for that moment saved by the blood divine say yeah say yeah so if you want to be whole are you washed are you really saved I'm serious are you really saved it's deeper than church it really is It is deeper than just serving somewhere. Are we really saved? See, we won't talk about salvation. Save people are dedicated to God. Save people look for things to do to bring God glory. Save people inventory, take inventory of their hearts to make sure they're right and ask for forgiveness when it's wrong. Because saved people are not legal people. They are love people who love God and whom God loved first. How many times have you said aloud, not in a crowd like this, but in a crowd opposing you, that Jesus is Lord? How many circles have you been in where you know people don't know him, but you do, and you acknowledge him? How many of you sit at the bar and ask for a Shirley Temple while the one beside you asked for a rum and coke and then discuss the difference between your drinks? Because you just can't be saved in church. You can get saved in church. But if you really think about what Paul is saying, salvation is a public announcement, not a private walk. If you're afraid to do that and be that, Paul says, do it. And we will not be put to shame. When the doors of the church are open, 